Hi, I'm Steve Sample with Bama Talk. Don't miss a single episode of Bama Talk Show available now on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app and on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. This is the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, the 8th of April, 2013. I'm James Spann. Alabama's weather warming up the warmest weather so far this year by midweek. And after that, we'll deal with some strong storms on Thursday. What about severe chances? A lot of things on the plate. So let's get in there and take a look at what's happening early this morning. These are coming off the SkyCam uh, network. Uh, That's the Tuscaloosa camera. The sky is cloudy. Low stratus clouds have formed in many areas. Here's the Coleman SkyCam. And a look at downtown Haleyville. Very energetic pattern, as you expect in April across the continental United States. One batch of storms with a short wave coming through the upper Midwest. A very strong trough coming into California. And that will be getting into the American Upper Air Network uh, today, making for a much higher confidence forecast for the rest of this week. Starting off the day with numbers really all over the board. You've got 40s up in northeast Alabama, Birmingham at 63. That's a good 15-degree uh, swing there, but uh, uh, low stratus clouds have formed in many areas. And we'll see some sun later today, but uh, some clouds as well. But the day should be dry. A lot of things happening out in the uh, western states with winter weather. Look at all the winter storm watches and warnings. Blizzard warnings up for parts of northwest Colorado and northeast Utah. Mercy me. How about that for spring? Uh, winter storm watches and warnings. Uh, Colorado, Wyoming, Nebraska, South Dakota, up into Montana, a lot of wind issues out west. And, of course, in the warm sectors, severe weather will be a problem. This is the day one severe weather outlook. Slight risk for in parts of the nation's heartland. Tomorrow could be a pretty active day. Uh, uh, the, the standard slight risk is up from the Texas Hill Country almost to Des Moines, Iowa. And within that, we have the enhancement that includes Dallas-Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, Springfield, and Wichita. And uh, again, there could be a few significant tornadoes in that region tomorrow. This is day three, which is Wednesday. The risk just just kind of noses into the northwestern corner of the state. But the enhanced area is still west of the state. Uh, some of the areas in the enhancement would include Shreveport, Jackson, Memphis, Little Rock, and Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And beyond that, there is no risk on Thursday right now in the day four through eight outlook. So at this point, Alabama is not in a risk. We do think there will be a severe weather uh, potential here on Thursday, but not as significant as what they're expecting west of here tomorrow and Wednesday. And we'll talk about that as we go along. This is the expected rain for the next five days. So this carries us through Saturday morning at seven o'clock. And this is showing rain amounts of uh, one to two inches for most of Alabama. And the bulk of that will be during the day on Thursday. We'll take a look at modeling. This is the GFS, the OZ run, valid at 1 o'clock local time this afternoon. You can see that first chunk of energy up over Michigan, but the big trough is out west, uh, digging down into the uh, uh, southwest United States. And down below that for today, uh, we'll warm up into the upper 70s. A lot of clouds around, but the sun should be out at times. And very cold air nosing into Montana with a 1036 high that's up over the uh, western part of Canada. Tomorrow, the trough digs and is progressive. Down below that, the main surface low is uh, around Amarillo, Texas, and a big snowstorm is likely for our friends out in uh, Denver and the Colorado Rockies. They're going to say, what spring is this? And you can clearly see with a setup like that, uh, the stage is set for severe weather uh, to the east and southeast of that surface low. Uh, some of the prime locations would be uh, Oklahoma, North Texas, and uh, maybe over into the Arklatex region Tuesday night. And clearly with a setup like that, there could be some tornadoes out there. All right, this is Wednesday at 1 o'clock local time Wednesday afternoon. Uh, we've got a surface low that is over western Arkansas. Um, and really, we're capped off during the day Wednesday. Uh, and it should be very warm. I mean, the thickness values are supporting mid-80s. Uh, 84. Now, should the cap break, there could be an afternoon storm in a spot or two Wednesday afternoon or Wednesday evening, but clearly the bulk of the big rains will still be west of here with the dynamic forcing. Uh, the Birmingham Barons have their home opener at the new stadium in downtown Birmingham Wednesday night. A reasonable chance that game will be okay. Can't guarantee that, but a reasonable chance. Now, this is Wednesday night just after midnight. This is 1 a.m. early Thursday morning. And you can see a squall line coming through Memphis in the Mid-South down toward Jackson with a 998 millibar low that's just south of St. Louis. 
And again, uh, with that set up, all modes of severe weather will be possible. But obviously, the whole thing rolls into a squall line. And with a squall line, typically the main issue is from strong straight line winds. And then this is Thursday afternoon at 1 o'clock local time. We've got good dynamic forcing with a long wave trough just west of here. The surface low is pretty far north on Thursday. Uh, it's just to the southeast of Chicago. And you can see the batch of storms coming in during the day. Uh, we'll do some model comparisons. And again, this is the GFS at 1 o'clock Thursday afternoon. This is the exact same time off the NAM. It is a tad slower. Uh, it's got the uh, main squall lines just moving into northwest Alabama around midday Thursday. And the European is even slower. This is late, late Thursday night, just after midnight, where the squall line comes in here. Uh, so, you know, you have to respect the European. It does a pretty good job, and it's been consistently slower the entire time. So based on that and the NAM, I would probably say the main window for storms, 9 a.m. Thursday until 9 p.m. Thursday. We'll open up that 12-hour window. All right, obviously we'll have strong storms. What about severe weather? Let's take a look at the instability. This is the uh, surface-based cape coming off the GFS at 1 o'clock Thursday. That's very unimpressive, really. Uh, the instabilities are generally under 1,000 joules here. I get the idea that's probably underdone, but uh, and, and certainly that's sufficient for some severe storms. But for an April event, you tend to want to see bigger numbers for a big, big outbreak. Uh, this is the projected bulk shear from the surface to 850 millibars. And those numbers, again, are supportive of organized storms and, uh, you know, maybe an isolated tornado, but the numbers are not overwhelming. And this is the projected EHI, the Energy Helicity Index, uh, Thursday afternoon. And again, anything over one is significant, but, you know, for, for an April outbreak here in the Deep South, you want to see those really over two, and, and the higher numbers are down to the south of here. So... These severe weather parameters are just not, you know, screamers, but they're supportive of severe weather. So looks like the main threat will be from strong straight line winds along that line of storms as it progresses through during the day Thursday. Should the storms come through Thursday afternoon or Thursday evening, we have better instability that might suggest a little higher tornado threat. But you'd also need to see a stronger surface low, maybe a secondary low down here. And there's not much evidence of that for now. So a squall line, main risk, strong straight line winds. We can't rule out an isolated tornado. And rain amounts of one to two inches. All right, Friday, everything is gone. And we will be a bit cooler. Highs go back in the 60s. Should start the day in the 40s. And this is Saturday. Saturday morning will be cool now. Uh, the GFS is showing 42. Some of the colder valleys could make a run at uh, mid-30s. And again, maybe with a touch of light frost, kind of like this past Saturday morning. But for the bulk of the state, we don't expect a frost problem. Uh, and then Saturday should be just a glorious day. Uh, highs uh, around 70 with a bright sunny sky. Just really, really nice. Low humidity. And Sunday looks good. Uh, Sunday, we go back in the middle 70s with a good supply of sunshine. So a really, really nice weekend coming up. And there's Monday of next week. Uh, the winds veer to the south, but uh, the weather still looks dry. You really need to go out to uh, April the 20th to find the next chance, the big chance of showers and storms. And that looks like there could be some thunder, but the main surface low is in Canada. Not a big, severe weather setup. And that's really good. So, uh, And by the way, this is the uh, 23rd, the end of the forecast. So... Really, over the next uh, 15, 16 days, the, the one severe weather threat would be uh, this coming Thursday if uh, all of this uh, happens to verify. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes in the blog. Next video here by 4 o'clock today. Don't forget, if you can, watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 News on the live stream or the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great Monday, and God bless. Hey, this is Ross with my partner, Bob. We have a show called Worldview Matters. And Ross, as you know, we believe that everything in life is somehow related to how people view the world around them. Our show is available on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Also available on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. 